Stand your ground to supersize and grow your business. Sharon horn Elsham. And these little props remind me of a couple of things with respect to this idiom. This idiom and expression has been around since the 1600s when stand your ground literally meant that soldier, soldiers, soldiers, not toy soldiers, but regular soldiers in armies would hold their territory against the enemy, especially against you know opposing forces. They would maintain and hold their territory. But by the end of the 1600s, it was already being used figuratively to mean... Uh, to act bravely, to not run away from a challenge or a fight or a, a, and to hold your opinion and your position, your beliefs and thoughts, even if other people didn't agree with them. So this is a very old idiom and I use it literally thousands of times when I'm talking to uh, people I'm working with, coaching, or when I am talking to my kids or my grandkids. Hey, you need to stand up for yourself. You need to do what's right for you. And when we know what's right for us, when we know what we believe in, know, we know what our core values are, when we know what our thoughts are, when we know where that line in the sand is that we will not ourselves cross, we can easily hold other people that we're in relationship with, with to that same standard, right? If we're doing something, just like with kids, we can't, and, and people we interact with and work with, we cannot expect other people to do things that we're not willing to ourselves. I did that a lot. I still do in my different businesses. I don't like to ask people to do something if I'm not willing to do that myself. And that applies to everything. Now, it doesn't mean I still do those things or that I like to, but I sure as heck have. Um, you know, from taking out the trash to cleaning the bathrooms to doing dishes in the food business, whatever. Uh, we do what it takes to set the example, to be the example, and then hold ourselves accountable and other people accountable to our various standards and processes and procedures. So I looked up a couple of ways to stand our ground in conversations or in relationships. Last month we were talking about communication, so I guess my brain is still on that wavelength. But how do we hold ourselves accountable and stand our ground? Again, if we know what we stand for, it's a lot easier to be consistent and stick to it than if we're wishy-washy or we don't really care about something. If we care about something deeply, which is why we stand our ground by our core values. Uh, but let's just share seven topics or seven, seven steps to doing this. Number one, trust your instincts, trust your gut, know what is right for you. Number two, don't play the victim. It's easy, easy, much easier to fall into the poor me, woe is me victim mentality than it is to say, no, this is where I stand on this and I'm not a victim because you don't agree with me. Uh, number three, ask questions to try to understand other people's point of view. If you want people to understand your point of view and perspective, you sure better be willing to ask questions and be empathetic and understand theirs and realize that they're coming from a different set of experiences than you are. And so they might just have more experience or different experience than you do with a particular topic or situation. Uh, request number four, request one-on-one -on -one conversations and time. It, sometimes we have to take things out of groups and especially like social media and have side conversations in messenger or more private one-on-one -on -one type situations than with the whole group because everybody has different experiences and it sort of convolutes what is going on in the discussion or in the situation. Uh, number five, let your words exude confidence. Let people know in your body language, your words, your actions, and when you're communicating, that you really do believe what you're sharing. Number six, remember that your opinions matter. Guess what? Just as much as anybody else's. We are entitled to our own thoughts, feelings, beliefs, and opinions on pretty much every topic across the spectrum that impacts us and other people. We get an opinion. Everybody gets an opinion, whether we agree with it or not. And it's, it's not up to us to judge other people's opinions or thoughts or beliefs or feelings. It's up to us to be empathetic and understand and realize that if we want to have our own opinions, our own line in the sand, stand our ground, then we have to be willing to let other people do the same thing. And finally, know why you're in the situation that you're in. Know why you're here. Why are you standing your ground? Why do you believe in this? Why is it important to you? And are you all in on it? Or is it something that you're willing to, to compromise on, to come up with win-win situations and scenarios and solutions for everyone involved? So I personally love this idiom. Uh, I guess I forgot to talk about the tree. I have the tree because it reminds me that, and normally it's not a Christmas tree, but it's the only tree I had handy, uh, that we can have a lot of growth when we 
a tree, think of how much a tree grows and it only grows in the same spot, right? It gets the resources it needs from the soil, from the, from the elements around it. And it, it grows and changes a lot. Well, we can do the same thing even if we're only committed to one thing. One of the things that I've learned over the years, and I've done a lot of different things and been involved in a lot of different businesses, but when I'm most successful, when I have the most successful with any given business is when I focus wholeheartedly on that and I go all in on it and I stand my ground and build that to the point of automation where I can move on and do something else. So, uh -huh. I've tried to multitask a lot of my life. I feel like if women didn't multitask, the, the species of human beings would cease to assist. It exists. And nowadays, that's not just women raising kids, but when I was growing up, that's what it was. And I know what a support system my mom was for my sisters and I, and how important that was to who I have become today. And I try to be that for my kids and my grandkids as well. But I can do that in one place. I don't have to be all over the place. I don't have to be interested in a ton of different things to grow and build and supersize my business. I really am more successful and we are more successful when we are focused and committed to creating the one business that's right for us. All right, that's it. Have an awesome day. Love to know your thoughts on this particular idiom. And I'll, of course, be with you tomorrow. Another interesting idiom, confidence related for this month because I'm sticking with the annual challenge and we're focusing on the area of confidence this month and we have to have a lot of confidence to supersize our business so i think it's appropriate have a great day and i'll of course be with you tomorrow